Hey folks, Jonathan here. All right, just happened to be out here standing beside my Hamilton flywheel, which we're hoping to start putting together before too long. Uh, engines getting closer and closer. And of course we pulled in yesterday with this uh, Bates cordless. And this was the weirdest find because of the way I found it. So here's what happened. Uh, I was searching on the internet for some pictures of another particular steam engine. I actually found pictures of the brand I was looking for. It wasn't a particular engine, it was a particular brand engine. And I found the pictures. So I took and uh, was looking at one of the pictures and there was some information with the picture that talked about the town that it came from and talked about they didn't know who the owner was or anything like that uh, but it did have the town and it did say that it was at a sawmill and what I done was went on Facebook marketplace and I actually found a, somebody that was selling an item that was sort of an uh, industrial style item because I was trying to find the right kind of person that would uh, be, you know, well, first helpful, but second, you know, sort of into a piece of equipment like this. So I actually found a guy that was selling a big generator. And what I'd done was, uh, and it, it was a big generator, so it wasn't little tiny stuff, but, and uh, and it was a newer model, it wasn't an antique. But So what I'd done was I, I actually messaged him and asked him, because their generator was for sale in the same town, I asked them if they happened to know about a steam engine anywhere in that particular town in a sawmill. And they actually messaged me back and said no, but I know some people, locals that may know, so I'll call uh, them tomorrow and let you know. So anyway, long story short, got a message back from them uh, with a name and number for a guy that owned a sawmill and wanted to sell it. Or sell the stuff from the sawmill and there were supposed to be two steam engines there so I called him and oh yeah I got steam engines I you know got one that's taken apart and one that's put together I'm interested in selling them uh, sent me two pictures or, or two pictures of this engine and pictures of the one in the weeds that you really couldn't see at all and the first thing I thought was well this is not the engines that I was looking for at all and now we've come to the conclusion that the engine I was looking for was not at that mill. It was in a mill, but there was a lot of mills in that particular town. And that town uh, probably had between 1800 and, or mid 1800s up to about mid 1900s, it probably had almost 20 different mills. And a lot of them were listed as being steam mills. So this engine here was that a different mill than what I was looking for. Uh, but it just happened that way and uh, so anyway uh, was able to strike up a deal on this one told him I'd take this one and then I would look at the other one when I got down and we'd just you know just discuss it so I bought this one uh, this engine here is I did not know what brand it was I actually asked him uh, if it was possible if he happened to to go buy it to take a picture of that tag and send it to me and he never did and he told me when I got there that he'd forgot to and which was good and fine because it sort of made it more exciting for me because I had a feeling it was a Bates but the base was made different if I had looked in my catalog I've got I would have known because I've got a catalog for the company that sold this particular engine in Richmond Richmond Virginia the Smith Courtney company and I would have known for sure 100% that it was a, a Bates, but I just did not look in that catalog. I looked everywhere else. I looked at every picture on the internet, and I couldn't find a base style like that. So what this is, is still an early engine. Uh, it's advertised 1905 in my book. And uh, the engine is considered a heavy, uh, heavy base engine or heavy duty engine. The base is just way, you know, more to it and uh stronger base so uh we haven't or i haven't figured out what you know what i'm going to do if i'm going to wait and tear this down 
redo it uh, if I'm going to go ahead and set it up first before I take it apart. Uh, I like the flat base at the bottom. It'll make it easy on a foundation. It won't, you know, there won't be no step ups or nothing. Uh, I thought about what I could do. It's kind of neat because it's still got the crank in it, and uh, which I would have probably pulled out. But you know, they, you know, do things their own way. I have no problem with that. So I could basically take a flat, uh, you know, straight edge of some sort and clamp to the base. And run out and then I could get a measurement up so basically what I can do is I can figure out what height our uh, outside foundation for our block bearing needs to be it'd be pretty easy to figure that way you know you make it a little low and then you can shim up to it so anyway so there's writing on the side of this there's pinstripes on the side of it uh, the green paint uh, if you rub it that's what you get so I think the green is on the outside of the white. I'm sure it is, and it's slowly going away. So I'm gonna to try to get some pictures of the side of this and maybe we can figure out what it said. Uh, I don't think there's any writing down here. I just think there was some writing here. And I don't see, I don't see baits or nothing like that on it. So it could be the name of the sawmill or something. But anyway, so the other engine up there is a uh, Houston Stanwood and Gamble, which the, well, the boiler that my wife and I had winched out of the woods from the Bates engine, the first Bates engine, uh, was the same brand and uh, pretty popular brand. So the engine that's there is the biggest engine that they made side shaft or side side crank i'm sorry sorry side crank engine this is also a side crank but it's cordless so that overruns the calling of the side crank but uh, the engine is 18 inch bore and 22 inch stroke and it weighs 14,000 pounds so it's probably a lot you know right much lighter than this one but it's 14,000 with flywheel and everything so uh, may end up going to getting it and the two generators uh, getting both of them probably but uh, that'll be a later date but that'll be another load you know for the low boy trader 14,000 plus the two generators that you know that won't be a problem at all not for this trailer so uh, you know we've made three runs with this trailer total counting this run so the first two was 130 miles uh, one way uh, we've done that trip twice so that would have been uh, 260 and 260 so over 500 miles and then we've done this 170 so that's what 340 uh, total so we you know we put some miles on it but it's all working miles and uh, the trader seems to be doing just you know excellent 100% so we went through you know went through the brakes checked them adjusted them uh, I actually replaced all the nuts on the on the lugs because they had been tightened so many times and stuff they you know they wasn't good and flat they was actually rounded inside and messed up so uh, we uh, greased all the bearings up like I said adjust the brakes redone the wiring redone the brake lines the airlines and uh, trailers flawless I mean it works perfect there's no no issues there when it comes to you know uh, axles tires brakes there's I've been all up under this trailer and there's never been any cracks or welds uh, it's kind of funny and I'll, I'll explain this because I, I you know it, you, it's a damn you do damn if you don't situation it's you know you got your good and your bad with it uh, no suspension on this trailer and this axle does not go over to the other wheel this axle don't go over to that wheel these are complete this is an independent sort of like a truck right here and it's the same way on the other side so what happens is is uh, it pivots right here in the center no springs no shocks no nothing what happens is if i was to pull forward and pulled this tire up on this block right here on a normal trailer that would put all the weight up on this one and take the weight off of this one so you'd have a spring suspension and you know up until that spring pushed and then it lifted the weight off this wheel this trailer don't work that way if i pulled this wheel up on top of this beam Okay, all it does is equal, still equalizes all the weight from here to here because the pivot's in the center. 
so it still has the exact same amount of weight on this tire and that tire no matter if it's up on that block or if it's down on the ground or if this one's up on a block so until you've turned it far enough bottom out you're always going to keep the same amount of weight from one axle to the other axle and that's or one set of wheels to the other set of wheels and that is the reason that you don't have as much issues with breakage uh you know tearing up one axle and not the other uh you know tires don't uh, pop as quick because you know i'm never putting way more weight on this tire it's always equalizing out with this tire so it's sort of you could call it an equalizer and uh although you know it's a non-suspension trailer i really like that i like the way that it works i like the way it's made now it's hard on the the guy driving the truck because you get a lot of bouncing when you hit in between especially if you're out in a spring ride truck so scott had a good time yesterday bouncing around in the truck but uh but as for the trailer it's as, as tough as nails and that old i had got there to get this or before we had got there uh he had these flywheels sitting just like this is what he told me and somebody had leaned against one of them and it started to fall so he decided to change up because he didn't want to leave them sitting there and i totally understand that you know no problem with that but here's the problem when he turned them over uh he did break a spoke which to me you know it's, it's heartbreaking but you know it happens uh you know it is what it is just like i told him i know he felt bad about it and i think that's why he sort of uh told me when i got there that uh he wanted me to load them with the forklift with his forklift just you, he said you know you know how to drive a forklift just use them and i didn't know that man from you know adam but i mean he kind of figured that we knew what we was doing anyway so he just had me run the forklift because i think he was felt bad and was kind of worried about you know breaking something again so uh anyway uh it is what it is and like i told him i said look man i said the fact that the flywheel exists is enough for me and it's not a big deal you know it's not a big issue it's just another hurdle we can handle so what we'll do i will clamp this thing together just as tight as can be and bind it from down here to the center whatever i got to do to get it right maybe even bolt the two together beforehand and lay them down and then uh, what i'm going to do is i will drill from the outside the flat surface all the way down through here and we're going to tap it and once we tap it we'll run a bolt in it loctite and then cut it off on the other end and we'll do a couple of them and then we'll uh figure out what we're going to do to hide the crack whether we're going to weld it or if we're going to just fake it in there but it'll be a mechanical bond basically what it will be instead of just welding it and uh we'll go from there but i mean you know what we're doing with it and you know doing a good repair on it, it's not going to matter anyway so uh, I've never had that problem with any of my flywheels, but I have heard of people having that issue and that's what they've done. So, got nice pinstriping on this side too. I don't know if we'll, it's kind of a funky look, but that's more of a, that pinstriping is more of a factory look. I mean, this thing could have came out of a factory. I don't know that it was set up at the mill where we was at. Uh, when he bought the property, it was sitting just like we seen it. So beside the building it could have been one that they purchased and was hoping to set up and it's been it was also my understanding that mill hasn't been in business in 50 years so i don't know and the glass on them oilers are broke but both of them are purple glass and i've never seen that before i uh, wish it was good got a governor it's got a break in the bottom of it a crack in the bottom of it where they someone has run into it with something or which is just normal. I mean, I think these engines, and I've always thought this, that way more stuff gets hurt on them moving them around than uh, actually gets hurt on them operating. Uh, they'll sit there and run forever, but if you go to picking them up with forklifts, and they're so heavy, you know, you're dealing with so much weight. And uh, yeah, I think the cracks at the bottom of the base of the governor up there, there's two bolts broke. I mean, it's not, there's no big issues at all with that. But, getting it unstuck but this is basically what i'm missing on the other one it's a lot like it it's a little bit different but i do have the drive on the side uh really really neat just tickled to have it dash pods so these adjustments here is, is what lets your 
air in and out basically uh, vacuum that way it will uh, pull your valve shut faster your intake valve and uh, of course up there is that Richmond uh, Virginia Smith Courtney Company machinery uh, all the latches are there all of them little ends that I was missing on the other baits that I had to make uh, are here I only had one and now this one's got all of them so to find an engine that hasn't been you know robbed and molested is really good and you know that gives me some ideas too now we get to see that on these ones they put oil cups over there which is neat uh, to me it's just you know really really nice like the way it's made so all right anyway tell you about this one and then uh what we got to do to it and what we got to do to fix it now it's not eating anything where it's sitting so we're good for now uh i'm gonna fire the boiler sunday and yeah, so i got a few things i want to do before i do that and we're working on studebaker also 